what I try to do with my team is to support cities in developing a long-term strategy to mitigate the risk uh, of flooding. And uh, particularly in the global south, there are huge challenges for those cities. Uh, those cities are expanding very rapidly. Um, there's a lot of land use change around cities, resulting in erosion, uh, resulting in floods. Um, there is um, a poor quality in those cities in terms of uh, temperature. Uh, extreme uh, weather events are making those cities more vulnerable. So my relation to the problem is that we want to uh, help support cities in developing uh, those strategies. And that's always an inclusive process. So we, we work with the stakeholders. Um, and it has a long-term horizon, uh, but also we look at the short-term needs and what needs to be done now to lessen the, the major problems. What we see is that um, it seems that the dynamics are, are going faster. Um, for instance, in China, um, uh, it, Chinese cities, they, they, they started, say, 10, 15 years ago with, say, 100,000 uh, citizens. And now they have, um, some have uh, over 5 million uh, citizens. So what we see is that the dynamics seems to increase. Um, so there is no time to, to reflect uh, and to, to consider carefully what should be the next steps. Everything is, is, is going in, into a haste. And the same holds true for the, uh, the, more the, the global south, the, the, the countries, the developing countries and cities in those developing countries. But what we try to do is to bring those cities together and to create a sort of network that those cities can learn from each other and also can co-create with each other uh, and work on solutions for the future. One of the benefits is that systems, grey infrastructural systems, are not designed to, for exceedance, eh? they are not designed for failure. Um, and that means that if the systems are failing, the consequences of failing are often huge, the, the damage of failure are huge. Now when we complement grey infrastructural systems with green systems, then we build in resilience. Eh? The systems are able to bounce back or even to recover quicker uh, and have some extra capacity to, to dampen, uh, say, the, the effects of, of extreme uh, weather events or extreme uh, stresses. So I think what is the, the transition, what is needed, that we slowly uh, um, incorporate in, uh, in the retrofitting and upgrading and maintenance schemes of grey infrastructure, uh, green infrastructural systems. And that is a, a slow process because we cannot do that overnight. Eh? To, to replace a, a grey system by a green system is, is very expensive, but when we have an understanding when the lifetime of those systems are ending, uh, we could anticipate and could say, okay, let's design this system uh, in such a way that, that we enrich it with, with grey and green uh, infrastructural components. One example which is uh, close to my heart is Kendari, and it's, it's situated um, in a bay. And upstream there are forests, tropical forests, and the people are cutting Ill illegally the forest, resulting in erosion, and the erosion results in sedimentation in the river. And then when there is heavy rainfall in the catchment area, more frequent and devastating floods are occurring in that area. Now what is um, being advocated there in, in Kandari is to, um, to develop a, a room for the river concept uh, on the short term, which allows to, to, to create traps uh, for the sediments, to collect the traps, and also downstreams to uh, increase the, um, the area of mangrove forest. And the mangrove forests um, are now disappearing 
of course, in that bay, but the plan is to reintroduce the mangrove forest, and that will also create a sort of green buffer uh, around the city, uh, which on, on the one hand protects the city against the storm surges, but also gives uh, a better local climate. It will reduce the, the, the heat waves and it will also absorb uh, excess rainfall. So I think that is a beautiful example in, in, uh, in, in the Global South, in Indonesia. Another example uh, which is, is, is close to my heart is the, um, the, the Spon City project in Kunshan. Kunshan is one of the vanguard cities in Spon Cities in China. And there has now been implemented already and that was uh, realized in a, in a very short time span, in only two years time, uh, large areas uh, of urban agriculture. And the beauty of uh, introducing urban agriculture in, in Chinese cities is that the citizens, uh, the, the, the newcomers to, to those cities uh, in China, have a rural background. And their parents were probably farmers, or most of them were farmers. So the citizens coming to those cities, they, um, they are, are very much uh, inclined to, um, to spend time their free time, uh, which they will have more and more, uh, on those urban agricultural land. Now, in that particular example of Kun Sham, uh, there's a private company who is managing the urban agricultural plots. And they, that company is supporting the service to the citizens to uh, grow their own crops. Uh, they have equipment, they have uh, the knowledge how to do that. So they will support the citizens to, uh, to have their own plot and to produce their own fruit and, and vegetables. So I think that is also a very nice example of nature-based solutions.